Hello friends, I am so excited. We are going to go chasing Aurora Borealis. It is February in Alaska. It is one of the best times to see the Aurora and we're taking it up a notch. We are going to go to Fairbanks, Alaska to see them. I have a quick weekend trip planned with my sister and because you can only see the Aurora Borealis when it's dark, we have a lot of other things packed into our couple days in Fairbanks and we cannot wait to bring you along. I'm currently doing the packing. This is Alaska dress code, which means we're just gonna be packing warm things. It's supposed to be negative 10 to positive 10 Fahrenheit while we're in Fairbanks. So we're gonna be packing long johns and wool leggings and our snow gear, boots, hats, gloves, all of those things. Cause a lot of the activities we're doing are outdoor activities. And Miss Luna is taking a nap right next to me as I'm packing. Hi, sweetheart. I have not been to Fairbanks in the winter time since I was like 16 years old. And it was just such a quick trip that I don't remember much at all. So I'm really excited. This has been on my bucket list for a while and I'm glad that because of this channel, I am finally making it happen. Along with all the warm gear, I am packing a swimming suit because we are gonna go to Chino Hot Springs. Uh, I have always wanted to do this and never done it in all my years living in Alaska. So we're gonna check out Chino Hot Springs swimsuit is packed. I'm also bringing some of my favorite geometry beach towels. Uh, they fold up really tiny but are huge and so pretty. That's beside the point but they do charge extra at Chino Hot Springs if you want to rent a towel so I figured we would bring our own. And some flip-flops. Got my fleece plants, got my soft loungers, and then these are wool leggings. Um, I do have my Costco uh, long underwear in here. These are great for wearing under layers, especially if it's cold. I have invested in these. I'm trying them out before I suggest them to all of you. They are called Woolex Stella leggings. These are like premium base layers made out of wool. Um, they are much more expensive, but I want to try them for a while before I really suggest things like this to you. So we're putting them to the test in Fairbanks where it is much colder than here in Anchorage. In case you're unfamiliar, Fairbanks is in interior Alaska, up in the middle of Alaska. We are in Anchorage, down by the coast. So our temperatures do not get nearly as cold as they do in Fairbanks, so I'm packing for the cold. I need to make sure I grab gloves, hat, a scarf, and then I think we're about ready to go. We are flying to Fairbanks, and thankfully with Alaska Airlines, if you're an Alaska resident, you can join what's called Club 49. Alaska is the 49th state. And when you are a Club 49 member, you get two free bags every time you travel. So I am not skimping on boots, jackets, and gear for this trip. Even though it is a short trip, I'm filling these bags up and I'm gonna get to put my Aurora Wear jacket to the test. This is my heated jacket. I am bringing the battery fully charged and the charger so that I have a heated jacket while I am in frigid. Fairbanks. I'm going to put this in the pocket so I don't forget it. Plug it in. And then I'm also just going to stick the charger in the other pocket. Don't want to forget the charger. This bag is going to be full of shoes. Ugh. Got my warm boots. These are called bog boots. They are our favorite. They say they go to like negative 20. We use them year round, love them. My kids love them. They're so easy to pull on. People always ask me boot recommendations. Also bringing my short extra tufts. They're just what I like to wear everywhere. And some tennis shoes. Then I have my neck warmer, a full face balaclava, some wool mittens. And then I need to find my small gloves. Bring in a backup water bottle and some more gloves. I think we're packed.
Got all my camera equipment and computer packed. Luna was not even phased. She never even moved. Whew, I just finished up Costco shopping. You probably already saw that video, but I wanted to make sure I left the boys with a well-stocked refrigerator before I leave. It feels really weird to pack for just myself. Almost everywhere we go, I'm helping all the boys pack and, you know, so packing just for myself felt quite easy today. Everything's packed up. The groceries are put away. Luna has not moved from this spot since I was doing uh, my packing earlier this morning. So she has had a very nice nap and I am ready to go. I'm excited for this adventure and I'm excited to bring you along. So we'll see you at the airport. All right, I busted my sister out of work and we are headed to Fairbanks. <laughs> Our flight to Fairbanks was operated by Horizon Air. This was a smaller airplane. It had four seats across. The flight to Fairbanks is only 45 minutes, but we ended up sitting on the ground for about 45 minutes before we eventually took off. So instead of a 45 minute flight, it ended up being an hour and a half, getting us into Fairbanks later than we had planned. But that was okay. We made our way off the airplane into the Fairbanks airport and we're off to get our luggage and rental car. Well, it's snowing, which is not looking good for our Aurora viewing tonight, but thankfully I've been in touch with the owners. They're letting us move our Aurora viewing to tomorrow night. So now our goal is to go get some food because I'm starving. We ended up at LaBelle's Bistro, which is inside a hotel in downtown Fairbanks. LaBelle specializes in seasonal salads, soups, and variety of entrees. They also have an extensive wine cellar that is one of the largest in Fairbanks. They proudly use Alaskan grown products and certified Angus beef and also have a plethora of gluten-free options available. We opted for a beet salad, a crab and artichoke dip with homemade pitas and then some beef tips with mushrooms. We just shared everything. The best part of the meal for me was the salad. It was really, really good. And then we finished our night with an apple tart with some local made ice cream from Hot Licks in Fairbanks. We finally made it to the hotel. It is just about 10 o'clock at night. We're trying to decide if we should go look for the Aurora. It was snowing when we got here, but it looked like the clouds were trying to like break up. Um, we are going on a Aurora viewing tour. Um, it was supposed to be tonight starting at 10 o'clock so right now but because of the weather we opted to move it to tomorrow night and this is what they said the forecast is amazing for tonight and tomorrow but because of the clouds tomorrow would be a better bet it's 6kp tomorrow which means greens blues and reds i've never seen red northern lights so i'm hopeful we think that we're gonna just relax for a few minutes and then go out on our own, try and find a good spot to look for the Northern Lights since we're here. All right, we're heading off on an adventure to look for the lights. Stop number one is still way too close to lights and way too many clouds, so we're gonna keep looking. Using some pins we found online, we were able to find an area that was dark enough, but then the snow started to come down really heavily, which was not ideal for viewing the Aurora Borealis. Well, we gave it a valiant effort. Uh, we were out in the middle of nowhere where it was very, very dark, and then it really started to snow. So we decided to turn around before we lost cell reception and got lost or stuck somewhere. And we're gonna go to bed. Good morning. We've had a lazy morning. I read my book for a little while and we're gonna head to the gym for a workout and some breakfast and then head off on our day's activities. There's a lot more stores here than I think I realized. Just outside our window, I see Lowe's, Sportsman's Warehouse, Barnes & Noble, GameStop, Petco, Famous Footwear and Old Navy, Pita Pit, Sonic, Arby's, Lowe's, and Home Depot, that's a lot of stores. 
We had a really good workout, and then we went to the breakfast provided by our hotel. An interesting thing that happened while we were having our breakfast was we overheard the people next to us say that they were from out of state, and then these people showed up with these big, giant bags. And then they started pulling out snow pants and jackets and boots, and then I saw the logo on the bag, and I looked it up on my phone, and it is a gear rental, which is just so brilliant because not everybody has all the snow gear needed to walk around in negative degree temperatures when they're coming to visit Alaska and it would take up a lot of your space in your luggage to bring the appropriate gear so we looked them up on the internet you can rent gear they will meet you at your hotel they will meet you at the airport wherever you need and then you can drop it off at the front desk of your hotel or they have a meeting spot at the airport I just think that is so smart and so convenient for people coming to visit Alaska the company is called Alaska element gear up and get out Arctic outerwear rental for Fairbanks Alaska quality outerwear. That was another thing that I noticed. They were giving them really good jackets, like North Face jackets, so they would be appropriate for this kind of weather. So I'm really glad that we overheard that because that was something that was kind of in the back of my mind, but I hadn't done any research yet of how you would tackle that problem if you were coming to Alaska. So they have solved it. We are pretty much gonna be out for the day, so we're trying to make sure we have everything we need for today's adventures, including snow gear and swimming gear. I've got on my wool leggings wool socks, fleece, and then long john top. In the bag, I've got the gloves, hats, snow pants, extra warmer boots. I am just gonna wear my little extra tufts and my swimming gear. It is currently nine degrees this morning. We even have some blue skies. This isn't particularly cold for Fairbanks. I'm letting the car warm up. A lot of the cars here have a plug with a block heater and they have plugs all along the parking lot. You don't see that as much in Anchorage, but here when it gets into the negative degree temperatures for extended periods of time, you need things like that. So we are off to check out Fairbanks in the daylight since we came in the dark last night. Well, we didn't make it very far because there's a Costco here. And since I just went to Costco yesterday, we might as well go inside, see if there's anything different at this Costco here in Fairbanks or any different prices. 100 pound propane tank. I've never seen a propane tank that big. <laughs> Four years ago, this was a Sam's Club. When Sam's Club left Alaska, Fairbanks turned the Sam's Club into a Costco, which was very smart because it would have left the people up here without a bulk shopping option. And I'm sure it has done really, really well. Oh, they have their liquor department in the back here. That's different than our Anchorage one. All right, I bought these yesterday at the same price, $5.99. Bananas are also the same price. This is very different. They have their raisins and dried fruit back in the fruit section. Ours in Anchorage has that in the snacking section. Blueberries are $6.49, that's the same as I paid. And these grapes were $8.99, which is also the same that I paid. Well, as far as Costco's go, that was very similar to our Alaska Costco's that we're used to. Maybe a few different products, same prices, which we're pretty shocked about, and then different layout than we have, but not much different. just got on the Chino Hot Springs Road. It's a 56 mile drive, so it's gonna take us a little bit over an hour to get out to Chino Hot Springs. It's sunny and beautiful and the road conditions are good, so we're just gonna enjoy this drive out to the Ice Museum and Chino Hot Springs. That's what we're doing today. Yesterday when we rented the car, the lady's like, there's a big crack across the windshield. So if you get any more, it's already been paid for, it's gonna get fixed, but it shouldn't deter you from driving it. But it is a, there are lots, lots and lots of big rock things. That is very common in Alaska to have your windshield get broken by gravel that gets pushed up from drivers in front of you, so. This rental car is no exception.
We made it to the Aurora Ice Museum here at Chino Hot Springs and we have an appointment in about 20 minutes to take our tour through there. You have to use a tour guide, but it looks pretty interesting. There is a cool, probably what, World War II plane? I don't know. And some huge ice blocks here. That's the ice museum in there. It's about a 45 minute tour in the ice museum. Not really sure what they show you, but we're gonna find out. The thermostat said 10 degrees, which is not bad when you think it could be negative 20. It does smell like sulfur, so we're near the hot springs. We made our way over to the main lodge and it was really fun to see some artifacts and pictures from the China history. Over 100 years ago, prospectors went in search of hot springs after a geological survey had seen steam rising from a valley somewhere in the upper Chena River. In 1905, two brothers found the hot springs, and by 1911, the property had a stable, bathhouse, and 12 small cabins. It has grown since then, but it still has that same Alaska charm. In addition to the ice museum and the hot springs, they do have lodging accommodations at Chena Hot Springs Resort, and they have a lot of options. This is the Moose Lodge, different rooms. These are two queen beds or two king beds. They have these fox rooms, two double beds. They have the Bear Family Suites. $309 a night. These do six people, two queen beds and two twin beds. They also have cabins. There are a variety of different types of cabins. These are quite rustic. They are also dry cabins, meaning there's no bathroom or running water. They're just outhouse. They do have camping and RVs available, but as far as I could tell, this was only in the summer. Yes, May 15th to September 15th. And they also have some yurts, but again, I think this is just a summertime thing. I could be wrong. Yes, available May to September. So they have a lot of different options available at Chena Hot Springs. None of them are very fancy, but you could stay comfortably while visiting the hot springs. There is also a Chena shuttle that will bring you out to the resort round trip $130 per person. So that is a great option for those that do not have a rental car. Chino Hot Springs does have a restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They also have the Trails and Lounge that features popular Alaskan and imported beverages and specialty drinks. The menu at the restaurant looked fantastic with a lot of items to choose from, including a lot of local Alaskan items like scallops, salmon, halibut, as well as burgers, sandwiches, soups, and salad. The amazing thing about the restaurant is that their veggies are China fresh. China Hot Springs began with a small test greenhouse in 2004 to explore the challenges of year-round greenhouse production in the extreme Alaska conditions. Today, utilizing the geothermal water, China Hot Springs heats a 7,060 square foot greenhouse maintaining a 75 degree Fahrenheit indoor temperature, even when it drops below negative 50. The resort produces fresh lettuce, tomatoes, and herbs year-round for use in the restaurant. How amazing is that? Next to the restaurant, you can also find a gift shop that has lots of China Hot Springs memorabilia, including these awesome robes. We are headed to the activity center. That is where our tour starts for the ice museum. The activity center was extremely busy, but we got in line to check in for our ice museum tour. And we're quickly led outside with a group of about 85 people to take our tour of the ice museum. To keep the sculptures inside from thawing, you are first led into a vestibule and the door is shut behind you. There are jackets provided, but since it is winter and everyone was already wearing a jacket, they opened the next door to allow us into the ice museum. First off, you see an ice carver at work before moving into the vast dome. This building is not made out of ice, but there are many structures inside that are, including this wall. There is stuff to look at everywhere around you in this ice museum. These flowers are encased in ice. There are carvings. 
There are cool sculptures. It's 25 degrees in here, so it's actually warmer than it is outside. The addition of LED lights brings the ice sculptures to life, including these hanging chandeliers made out of ice. Many of these ice carvings are made by world championship ice carvers. There is also a bar inside the ice museum and you can pay extra to get an apple teeny in a ice glass. This thing here is the ice chapel. You can pay to get married inside of the ice chapel, which would be interesting. They say they hold several weddings a year, but not very long weddings because you don't want anybody to get cold feet. Next, we have an ice hotel room that you can pay $600 to stay in for the night. They will provide all the warm bedding and things that you need, but the bed is made out of ice. It's here behind me. It's a four poster bed. There were two of these rooms. Do you think you would stay in an ice hotel? This Northern Lights ice sculpture with the changing LED lights was probably our favorite of the whole ice museum. It was just amazing how the colors changed and it was very mesmerizing. They do provide a tour guide of the ice museum. He basically gives you a little bit of information about what you're going to see. He was very relaxed, not very professional, so don't expect too much from that. But you can watch as the ice carver makes the glasses for the apple teas, which was really cool to watch. They make about 160 of these glasses a day to be used in the ice museum, as well as carving other fun things to put around the ice museum. You cannot leave the ice museum on your own. You need to wait for your tour guide or one of the sculptors to let you out. And it is tradition to break your glass once you are outside. So we got to watch this lady break her glass. She was very excited about it. And that was our tour of the ice museum. This part doesn't seem to break. These are like everywhere. Bottom of the glass. So they have a restaurant, but the wait was like 40 minutes. So we came over to the Aurora Cafe, which is essentially just like Costco. <laughs> Little commissary, you can come get some food, heat it up in a microwave. In addition to these refrigerators full of grab and go foods, the Aurora Cafe also offers hot drinks like hot chocolate and coffee and things that you warm up in the microwave like little bowls of soup and it is also a gift shop. We got some food in our bellies. We're gonna go to the car and get our swimming gear and check out the hot springs. It really is a beautiful day. It's sunny, not too cold. The hot springs are for 18 and older. They do have an indoor pool and hot tub that kids can be in but the actual outdoor Hot Springs is only for 18 and older. Other activities they have here is snow machining, ice fishing, cross country skiing. Oh, he thinks I'm filming him. He was waiting. <laughs> Over this way, they have dog sledding and there's a runway for small airplanes. So they got a lot of different things here. Feels a little strange to be going in in snow gear and then expecting to go swimming outside. They have some massage cabins here. 
Okay. To enter the hot springs, you pay for a daily hot springs pass, which is around $20. You can come from 7 a.m. in the morning till 11.45 at night. There are locker rooms. You do need quarters to be able to lock your lockers, but then you have access to the hot springs for the day. To keep the hot springs from getting too hot, they do pump in cold water from other streams around China. The water is extremely clean and clear, and it is gorgeous all around, everywhere you look. The hot springs are open year round, but it is pretty cool to experience them in the winter time when it is cold outside. So the bottom is gravel. It's also not too cold outside today. It's very steamy. We're feeling really hopeful because there's tons of blue sky above us. We have our Aurora chasing tour tonight hoping we're going to see some good colors. Look at all that blue sky. Just keeps getting better and better, so it's making me really hopeful. That was like one of our main goals coming here was to see some good northern lights. If it were colder, our hair would be just complete icicles, but it's just not quite that cold. There's a little bit, but not much. We're going for a walkabout because it gets so hot over here. I didn't re we didn't realize it got hotter the further you went in. It is very warm. After recording this little walkabout, I went and put the cameras away and just relaxed and enjoyed the hot springs for an hour. There is also the indoor pool and hot tubs, as well as another outdoor hot tub that kids can swim in. It was a magical experience. Um, just be forewarned, if you ever come visit here, the locker room is complete chaos. Took some deep breaths to just get <laughs> in and out of the locker room, but the hot spring itself was magical. One last thing to note before we leave Chino Hot Springs is that they have a power plant that is run completely off of geothermal energy. It produces 100% of the electricity to run Chino Hot Springs as well as those greenhouses, which I find really amazing. We're headed back out again. We're gonna go find some pizza. <laughs> we have all these recommendations we find online, but pizza sounded good. So we're gonna go see what we can find. So we ended up by the airport, this place called East Ramp Wood-Fired Pizza. It's like in an airplane hangar, pretty much. <laughs> we're not sure where we are. We're lost, but we're here. What we stepped into was an extremely charming restaurant that sits on the runway of the airport for small airplanes. You grab a menu and a clipboard and then you take it to your seat and fill it out before going up to the cash register to order and pay. Then they make your food and bring it to you. The more we looked around, the more charming we realized this restaurant was having all sorts of airplane memorabilia, these old seats, 
and the food was really good. We ordered some Greek salads and then we tried their garlic cheese bread as well as one of their specialty pizzas. It was all really tasty. They also have binoculars hanging by the windows so that you can watch the airplanes come and go. I think my kids would absolutely love coming here. And they also had this little pilot's log that had suggestions on pizzas to order. If you are unfamiliar with small airplanes, you have a pilot's log that you write all your flight time in, but they turned it into a menu of people's personal choices. I thought that was a super cute touch. We had a great meal at East Ramp Wood Fire Pizza. It's about nine o'clock at night. My sister is up in the room taking a nap before we go on our all night Aurora chasing adventure. I'm so excited. When we came home from dinner, it was cold and clear. So fingers crossed we will be able to see the Northern Lights tonight. Last night was a big bust. It was snowing. Hopefully tonight is much better, but I am gonna leave you hanging. Make sure you come back and see our Fairbanks trip number two. We're really excited to bring you along. We have a lot more in store for you here in Fairbanks. Thank you so much for watching. We are so grateful for each and every one of you that spends time with us here on the channel. We love you and we'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska Life Fairbanks edition.